Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to our Unity Simple Simon game tutorial series. So in the last episode, we added a way for our um, sequence to be lit up. So if we uh, press the little start button here, we start building up a new sequence of lights that the player needs to press. Of course, at the moment, um, our sequence doesn't actually work for us. We're adding more to the sequence every time, but the player, or not that the sequence doesn't work, but we've no way of checking what the player's input is. So at the moment, all that matters is you press the last button in the sequence and you actually get the correct answer here. So let's start adding some stuff to make this actually feel more like a game and actually um, uh, challenging for the player. So we want a way to check what happens when our player does their input. So basically we want to check um, we only want to be able to check when the when either the player has already pressed the start button or when the lights aren't currently moving at the moment. So we're going to add a new bool up here. We're going to call it um, private bool game active. So by default, game active will be false, and then we'll set it to be active as soon as we press the start button. Oh no, sorry, no, we'll leave it as false, actually, after the start button has been pressed. Because although the, the the game hasn't started, the game is started, we haven't we don't want the player to actually be able to press anything uh, that will be registered until after the sequence has played out. So uh on our position and sequence here, basically at the end of the sequence, so at after our sequence count has been checked against our position and sequence, if that's if we've reached the end, basically, what we can say, okay, at this point, game active is equal to true. So we know that we can start taking some input from the player and see if they are right or wrong. Okay, so we know we're taking input in our color pressed, um, our color pressed function here. So basically, we can say, okay, if the game active is true, then we're going to start doing some stuff. So we're going to wrap this around where our color select stuff is right here at the moment. I'm just going to highlight that and indent it. Um, so we need to start adding some code here, basically to keep track of um, which button is currently active. So at the moment, in our color select, uh, or we're checking it against the color select. So our color select is randomly decided. Every time we add a new value to the sequence, our color select is actually... Um, being updated. So at the moment, what hap what happens is, if we as long as we just press the number of the last button on the list, then it's absolutely fine. But we don't want that to keep working. We actually want it to check against whatever's in our active sequence list. So what we need to do is, and get, or we need to create is a new number value to keep track of where we are in that list with our player touching buttons. So we'll go back up here. We're going to add a new private int that we'll call input in sequence so much like we have position in sequence for uh, lighting up the buttons we want to use input in sequence to keep track of where we are in the sequence with our input and where we are with checking if the player is pressing the right button at the right time so what we'll do instead of um, having color select equal to which button what we're going to use is from our active sequence list we're going to check whatever value is at the position of input in sequence so we know that input in sequence is um where we are in the list so it'll start off as zero obviously so we need to make sure that we're setting that to always start off as zero much like we're doing with position in sequence here so whenever the start button is pressed we're making sure that input in sequence input in sequence is equal to zero. So it always goes back to being zero every time. So then we're checking if the current input in the sequence is equal to whatever button has been pressed. And if that is true, then we're going to leave our debug.log correct here for the moment. But the next thing we'll want to do is obviously increment that number so that input in sequence uh, plus plus like that so that next time when we press the next button we're checking if that is the the correct uh, number in the sequence um, so then what we want to do is at the moment as I said we have our active sequence adding a new one every time we press the start button but instead of 
doing that, we want it to be added on when our input is true. So what we want to do is add another check here to say, okay, if our input and sequence is true and we've, if we get to the end of the list so that we've basically gone through every number along the way, uh, so our active sequence, so say our, our active sequence list here is five numbers long, we go through from zero, one, two, three, four, and on the final fourth one, our input and sequence then becomes five. So what we can do is check if our input and sequence, if that is greater than or equal to our active sequence dot count. So basically we're just checking if our current value, if that is the same as however, um, many objects are within our list of uh, randomly selected numbers. And if that's true, then we know we've reached the end of the list. Much as back up here, we use the same thing to determine if we ended the um, sequence of lights that should light up. So here we can say, okay, well at that point, now we want to actually add some new stuff in. So we can do the exact same thing we did up here. We can copy, uh, we need to randomly select the color. We need to add it to the sequence. We need to light up that color. We need to reset our stay lit counter. And we also need to make sure that should be lit is equal to true. So we're gonna paste that in, in that little slot there. There's a couple of extra things we want to do here though. We wanna make sure that if we're adding a new number to sequence, we're gonna make it play from the beginning of the sequence again. So we need to make sure that position in sequence is equal to zero. And then of course, we also need to make sure that input in sequence is equal to zero because we're gonna to need to go back to checking the first number on the list again. And then the final thing we'll need to do is deactivate our game again so that we can't actually do any input until the sequence stops playing. So game active equals false. And that's pretty much all we need to do to control our input. So we're adding, we're, we're checking through the sequence by getting the input in the correct order. And if that is, we've, we've reached the end of that sequence, then we're adding a new one on and starting the whole sequence again. So that's the basic loop of our Simple Simon game. So that's what happens if we get it right. But of course, if our player inputs the wrong button in the sequence, basically what we want to do is deactivate the game. So we'll just say game active equals false. So then any more input we do won't actually do anything for us. And the only option the player will have is to restart the game. And so back here, at the moment we have it, our start button uh, just adds a new um, input or a new number into the sequence of the game. So what would happen is, say if the player got the game wrong or got the wrong answer, if they were to hit start game, it would actually just continue the game with a new number added onto the end, which obviously isn't what we want. We want to make sure that the, our whole list gets deleted and we go back to starting at a new random number. So the way to do that is just at the top up here, we'll just add in our active sequence. We can just say dot clear and put two brackets at the end and a semicolon. And that'll just uh, empty the whole list. So there'll be, it'll go back to being size zero as it is over here. And um, our player will have to restart again, basically. So let's go back into the game and see all this in action. Um, it should all work pretty straightforward, just the way we want it to. So we hit play here. And we'll start the game. So we get a one to start off with. So there we go, we got a one and a four. And a zero, so one, four, zero. It's very easy to keep track of the numbers here by looking down here. Let's make it a bit harder. Oh, I managed to get it right. Uh, actually, we, I just noticed our start game function, our start game button is floating up into the middle. So let's just fix that quickly for a second. Uh, just on our canvas, all we have to do to fix that is go to the button and make sure it anchors down to the bottom like that rather than the middle. So then our start game button doesn't end up floating around in the middle of our screen, which is kind of a bit awkward looking. So we'll just maximize this again. But you'll see the sequence is now working for us absolutely perfectly. 
so we can follow along and as soon as we press a button oh that just happened to be two uh, so we've got it adding a new color to the sequence every time and we're checking it along the way and every time we're getting correct down here so if we were to hit the wrong button say here here we go we got it wrong and now no matter what it's all no matter what we press it doesn't do anything but if we hit start game we go back to starting a new sequence every time so if we were to hit start game here now there we go we got a new sequence starting with green and there you go that's the basics of our our little game working so we've now got the basic functionality of the game it's all working perfectly fine so let's add a couple of things into the game in the next episode like sound and the ability to keep track of a high score so we'll do that in the next episode Thanks for checking out this episode, and if you want even more Games Plus James goodness, make sure you hit those subscribe and like buttons. You can also find me on Twitter and Facebook by following the links on screen, where you can find out all the latest news about the channel. And if you want to help support the show, check out the Patreon page, where you can get exclusive content in return for helping make the channel even better. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more.